Chapter 4 Don't invite the bond woman and her son back into the family 4 colon 1-7 Believers are adopted sons of God, not servants to the law. 4 colon 8-14 Legalism is a form of idolatry. 4 colon 15-20 Legalism causes loss of blessedness. 4 colon 21-31 Cast out the bond woman and her son, legalism. For colon one now I say, that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, too but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. The key to understanding this chapter is to know what we are heirs of. Paul uses an illustration common to the culture of that time. The heir has no authority when he is a child but are on the same level as a servant even though he is in line to inherit a fortune, the spirit of his son, for colon six. The child is under the authority of tutors and governors until the time appointed by the father. Tutors teach a child what they should do, while governors tell the child what not to do, therefore, tutors and governors were the law. But once the father determines that the child is capable of making responsible decisions on his own, then the father places that child into the position of a fully grown son in the family. At that time, the son is not under the authority of tutors and governors, but the father. 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, even so we, Jews and Gentiles were in bondage under the elements of the world. Israel was in bondage to the law and the Gentiles to idols, for colon 8, 21, Exodus 24 verses 7 and 8, dot. For but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Israel and the whole world were trapped as sinners under the law. But when the fullness of time was come according to Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27, God sent forth his son to be born of a virgin woman under the law to redeem Israel, ISA. 7 14, 9 colon 6, 7, Matt. 121, so that Israel might receive the adoption of sons, John 1 verse 12. Paul speaks as a Jew. Christ came to redeem Israel, buy them back from Satan and the bondage of the law, so they could reconcile the Gentiles. Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, Israel, for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, Rom. 15 colon 8, 9a. When Christ arrived on earth, the scribes and the Pharisees had perverted Judaism by valuing the traditions of men more than God's word. Christ was a ransom for the many of Israel, Matt. 2028. Through Paul we learn that Christ is the ransom for all, 1 Tim. 2 colon 6. The body of Christ are also sons of God, Rom. 819. And we are saved in spite of Israel, through her fall. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Rom. 11 11 12 The Gentile opportunity for salvation, the dispensation of grace was grafted into the olive tree, 314 The blessing of Abraham, Christ's spirit. Notice that the body of Christ was not grafted in, but anyone saved by faith today joins our group. We are living during the time of the nation of Israel's national temporary blindness, Rom. 1125, the nation of Israel is an apostasy and do not recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah. The first coming of Jesus Christ was as Messiah the Prince as prophesied by Daniel in the first year of Darius. Daniel was given two timelines by God. One, in a night vision, Dan. 219, to the Gentile King Nebuchadnezzar concerning the times of the Gentiles, Luke 21 verse 24, and the other one via the angel Gabriel to the nation of Israel, Dan. 921, the times of the Gentiles began in 608 BC, 538 plus 70, and after 70 years the Jews were allowed to return and build the temple by edict of Cyrus King of Persia, 538, and ends at the second coming, to Kron. 36 colon 22, 23, Ezra 1 verses 1 and 2. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon I will visit you, and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end, Je. 29 colon 10, 11. 
There are 89 years between these 70 years to cleanse the land and the beginning of Daniel's timeline, 490 years to cleanse the people and the order to rebuild the wall, 608-70-449-89 years, then 483 years until Palm Sunday. Six things, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression, complete the five courses of chastisement for idolatry, and to make an end of sins, make sins stop, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. Re reconcile Israel from her iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, the Son's lasting righteousness under the new covenant, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, to complete Daniel's vision and the rest of the prophecies, and to anoint the Most Holy, anoint Jesus the Son as the true King, Dan. 924. Christ came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey declaring himself to be the Messiah, the King of the Jews, exactly 483 years after the command was given to rebuild Jerusalem and wall, nay, 2 colon 1 8, on Palm Sunday. The temple took 46 years to rebuild, John 2 verse 20, and the wall 52 days, nay, 615, but Christ was cut off, killed, four days later on Passover. Therefore, 69 weeks, 483 years, are complete, and one week, seven years, remains to make the entire series of sevens, seven by seventy, or 490 years, Dan. 9 colon 24 dash 27. The Gentiles received their salvation opportunity in a gap between the 69th and 70th week where God inserted the mystery after Paul's salvation and commission in Acts 9. God postponed the prophesied kingdom on earth until the dispensation of grace ends with our rapture. Christ gave the promise of his spirit to the Galatians for free, but they wanted to earn it by keeping the law which no one could keep even with his spirit in us because of the sinful flesh in our mortal bodies. Christ redeemed us from religious rules and fleshly rituals, Colossians 2 verses 8 to 23, dot. 6 And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. 7 Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now Paul says the Galatians and the body of Christ are sons by faith and we inherit the spirit of his son in our hearts crying, Abba, Father. Thus, we are no longer a servant, without any authority, but a son, and since you are a son you are an heir of God through Christ. Rom. 8.17 Paul said the same in Romans, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, the law, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Rom. 8.15 We are waiting for our future adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body, Rom. 8.23 The body of Christ is predestined unto the adoption, F. 1.5 To serve in heaven. We are sons of God because we have the spirit of his son in us. As sons, we have an intimate relationship with the father and can cry Abba, Father, Daddy, as Jesus did. Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless not what I will, but what thou wilt. Mark 14 verse 36. Adoption in scripture does not mean receiving someone else's child into the family, but the father determining when a child is mature enough to be placed in a position of responsibility in the family business as an adult son. A son serves his father out of love, not fear of punishment. 8 Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. 9 But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? How is it then that before ye knew God ye worshipped idols, but now that ye know God, or rather are known of God, you turn back again to make an idol out of the law and worship something that is weak, no power, and beggarly, bankrupt, elements, rituals, of the law when you are free under grace? Why do you desire to be in bondage to the law again after you were set free from idols? It is clear that Paul is speaking of the law because he says ye that desire to be under the law in 421. Why do you want to go back to being a child who needs to be told what to do and not to do, instead of staying a son who does right out of love for his father? Why are you going back to living under the law which couldn't save you? Like a mirror, the law shows us the dirt on our faces, but it cannot clean it up. There was nothing wrong with the law, it was holy, and just, and good, wrong. 7.12 the problem is not with the law, but that wretched sinners cannot keep it in our flesh, Rom. 
5.12.7.24 We cannot live righteously by trying to keep the law. Have you ever tried to keep your New Year's resolutions? Gym memberships go up, but soon gym attendance goes down. But under grace, we are accepted in His Son and the Beloved, F. 1 colon 6, and complete in Him, Colossians 2 verse 10. Religion does not want us to know that. There is a big difference between living to be accepted and living out of already being accepted. We cannot get any more accepted than we already are. The Galatians turning back to the Mosaic Law, Judaism, under the guidance of their false teachers, it would in effect be as if they went back to pagan idolatry they had come out of. The law for Israel concerned doing physical things and were a shadow of things to come, Colossians 2 verses 16 and 17. The things to come is the new covenant of his blood for Israel at his second coming because animal sacrifices could never permanently take away sins. What was Israel's problem? They thought they could keep the law and were ignorant of how. Righteous holy God really is. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to every one that believeth. Romans 10 verses 3 and 4 The law which was intended to show man he was a sinner in need of righteousness was instead used by man to establish his own righteousness through carnal observances of outward requirements, Matt 23 23 The idolater similarly debased his conscience and became the willing slave to gods who only existed in his imagination. Man trusting in his own flesh is idolatry. Religious activity is the doctrines of devils, 1 Tim for colon 1, why would anyone want to go back to living under the law that could never save them, be kept, nor make them righteous? 10 ye observe days, and months, and times, and years. The Galatians were observing Jewish holy days, the new moons, the times of the Jewish feast days, and years. They had gone back to religious practices that they were dead to and did not pertain to them. Why should they observe Israel's feast days when they already had the imputed righteousness of Christ? For a grace believer, every day is important. 11. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. I am afraid for you, and that my work spent on you is a waste of time. 12. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are, ye have not injured me at all. Paul begs them to be free from the law and walk by grace through faith in God's word, his instruction to his heavenly people dependent on the spirit of Christ in them, as he does. He is in a deteriorating human body with the sinful flesh resident in it just like them. You are not hurting me, you are hurting yourselves. 13 Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. 14 In my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. 15 Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear ye record, that, if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes, and have given them to me. 16 a.m. I therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth. Paul reminds them of their gracious love for him when he first preached the gospel of their salvation to them on his first apostolic journey in Acts 13 and 14. They should follow Apostle Paul to follow Christ, 1 Cor. 11 colon 1, only Paul's gospel is valid today, 1 colon 6 dash 9, and what Christ said through him is to be followed. Although he had some kind of eye trouble, his trial was probably from all the beatings or stoning inflicted on him when he preached at Lystra, they ignored it and treated him like an angel and even as Christ. They were even willing to pluck out their eyes and give them to him if they could. Has your legalism caused you to lose your blessedness, love and respect? They were displaying the fruit of legalism in 515. Paul was correcting and saving them from error. He cared enough about them to tell them the truth and correct their legalistic error. Did that make him their enemy? 17. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yeah, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. 18. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. The zeal of the Judaizers was making the Galatians zealous in the wrong way and wanted to exclude them from Pauline truth and rewards as sons at the JSOC. The Judaizers wanted them to focus on physical works of the flesh instead of spiritual growth, and their foreskins to be another notch in their belt. Being zealous is fine if it isn't a good thing, God's word, and not only when Paul was there. 
19 My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, 20 I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Paul calls them his little children because they are not behaving like adult sons. They are not following our instructions of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, so godliness, 1 Tim. 6 colon 3, or Christ's life is not formed in them. But Paul does not give up on them, because Christ in him is not going to give up on the body of Christ and is willing to correct and reprove us. They were mixing themselves up with Christ according to prophecy, when he was on earth under the law, as recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The two operating systems law and grace cannot coexist. His spirit uses his word to change us from the inside out to be like Christ. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Cor. 3.18, worried, Paul wants to be with them and change his tone to a loving one, but has to be stern with them because he has serious doubts about their spiritual condition. Our hearts are also very concerned for the ignorant brethren who follow Christ's earthly ministry, or Peter instead of Paul, or mix Peter and Paul. We must be both biblical and dispensational and study the King James Bible rightly divided, 2 Tim, 2 colon 7, 15, dot. 21 Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? The law brought fear of punishment. Paul is going to let them hear the law. It is foolish to be saved by grace but then live as slaves under the law. Trying to live righteous by keeping the law just makes the flesh worse. Notice how Paul alludes to the warfare between the flesh and the spirit. 22 For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. 23 But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. 24 Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. 25 For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem which now is, and is in bondage with her children. 26 But Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. 27 For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate, no children, hath many more children, by faith, than she which hath an husband, by the flesh. 28 Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. 29 But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. An allegory is a story with a hidden meaning using a historical event. Paul uses an allegory of the bondwoman and the free woman to help them to understand the difference between the bondage of the law and their liberty in Christ. Agar, Greek for Hagar, the bondwoman, slave, symbolized the law, the old covenant made at Sinai. Her son Ishmael was the result of Abraham trying to have a son by his own flesh. Trying to keep the law in the flesh leads to bondage. The unbelieving Jews in Jerusalem were trying to keep the law in their flesh and stumbled on Christ. Rom. 9.30-33 The free woman, Sarah, represents the promise of the Spirit, God's covenant to Abraham and his seed for Israel. 3.8, 14-17, Rom. 9.4 But the body of Christ believers receive the Spirit of Christ by grace through faith. The new Jerusalem in Mount Shaun, Greek for Zion, and heaven above is free, and is the mother of us all, Heb. 12.22, Paul quotes ISA. 54.1, which comes right after ISA. 53. About the Redeemer of Israel, and talks about the rejoicing in the kingdom. But Paul applies this verse to us since Sarah is the mother of the believing and will have more spiritual children by faith, than Hagar by the flesh. Sarah is also in the Hall of Faith chapter, Heb. 11.10-19. We, like Isaac was, are the children of promise, born of the Spirit by faith in God. Just like Ishmael persecuted Isaac who was born miraculously by the Spirit, the Judaizers, who put value in the flesh, were really persecuting the Galatians by putting them in bondage. 30 Nevertheless what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. What do the Scriptures say to do? Cast out the bondwoman, the law, and her son, 
the persecuting Judaizers, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir, receive the spirit with the son of the free woman. 31 So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Paul says we are not children of the bondwoman, slaves, but of the free, just as Abraham is our spiritual father, Sarah is our spiritual mother. We are children of the free woman, but the Galatians were trying to invite the bondwoman and her son back into the family. Law and grace never mix. The focus of the law is on what we do, while the focus of grace is on what Christ did. Grace is all that God is able to do because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. God did not have to give anyone imputed righteousness, but he did it purely by grace. 5 colon 1 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and do not allow yourself to be removed. Do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage to the law to be right before God again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, Rom. 8 1. Notice that God is Christ in this verse, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, Rom. 8 9. Christ's Spirit in us has set us free from the law which condemns us, so stay in sound doctrine. Grace, the focus is what Christ did, Isaac, a son born by God's promise, the free woman Sarah, more children, Mount Shaun, promised spirit. Jerusalem above the mother of us all free, grace, persecuted. Jesus Christ was under the law. Law, the focus is what we do, Ishmael, a son born after the flesh, the bondwoman Agar, less children. Mount Sinai, Old Covenant, Jerusalem which now is, bondage, fear, persecutor, Galatians 4 verse 4 KJB, 4, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. What about Hebrews to Revelation? These letters are written to help the circumcision in the world to come, Heb, 2 colon 5, after the rapture. Hebrews refers to the 12 on Pentecost, Heb, 2 colon 3, 4. James wrote to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, James 1 verse 1. Peter talks about their fiery trial, the tribulation, 1 Peter 4 verse 12. John talks about Christ's second coming when he shall appear, 1 John 3 verse 2. Jude talked about how the 12 apostles warned of mockers, Jude 17, 18. Revelation refers to the words of this prophecy, Revelation 1 verse 3, being his priests, Rev 1 10, 5 10, 20 colon 6, and overcoming until the end of the tribulation when Jesus is revealed at his return, Revelation 19 verse 11. Chapter 5 Grace living is by faith with his spirit living through us 5 colon 1 12 Whosoever tries to live by keeping the law has fallen from grace. 5 colon 13 26 Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 5 colon 1 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Paul was shocked that the Galatians had allowed themselves to be so quickly removed from the grace of Christ, 1 colon 6, to another gospel which was to try to live by obeying the law. The legalizers had come into the assembly and convinced them of the error of living under the law. After they were saved they noticed that they still sinned, so the Galatians thought they could overcome their sin and be righteous by going back to trying to obey the law. Abraham found out that what he did by his self-effort was not acceptable to God. God had already promised him a seed long before he tried to have a child by the work of his flesh, Genesis 15 verse 4. God gave Abraham Isaac, a miraculous birth, by promise, Gen 21. God knew Abraham would receive Christ's righteousness by grace after Jesus rose again, Rom. 3.25, Peter and Paul both said that the law was a yoke of bondage that no one could keep, Acts 15 verse 10, Rom. 5.12, 7.15, But Jesus Christ had the faith to keep the law for us perfectly, PSA. 40.8, Christ was the only one who kept all the law perfectly. His Spirit in us helps us live holy lives, Titus 2 verse 12. Paul explained that Christ has redeemed us from the law and bore the curse of the law, 313, for us. There is no reason to be entangled again with trying to keep all of God's perfect law using our sinful flesh again. 
Stand fast in the spirit of promise given to you by faith and live by faith. Christ set us free from the bondage of the law, so stay free. As the hymn Once for All by Philip P. Bliss, 1838, goes, free from the law, O oh, happy condition. Jesus hath bled, and there is remission. We are dead to the law because our flesh was crucified with Christ the instant we were saved. We need to stand firm in our position in Christ and live by following the risen Lord's instructions he gave us through Paul. Stand fast in Paul's sound doctrine to us in Romans to Philemon. To behold, I Paul say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Our Apostle Paul says that if you think you can live righteously by keeping the Mosaic law, Christ will profit you nothing. You may be saved, but his life will not function in you. Being circumcised is an example of trying to be righteous by the works of the law, self-effort. Circumcision represents the entire Mosaic law. Paul said in 3.10 that the Mosaic law was an all-or-nothing arrangement. If you think you can live by keeping the law, you have to keep the whole law or be guilty of all. James 2 verse 10. Paul's Gentile converts had forgotten what he had taught them and had been persuaded by the false teachers, the Judaizers, to be circumcised like to proselytes under Israel's prophetic program. But Paul tells them that keeping the law by self-effort will not make them acceptable to God. Christ has done everything to save us, and now we need him to live through us. Life is in Christ and his word. It is his performance through us, not our performance. Paul demonstrated in Romans 7 that a believer who determines to please God in his own flesh is destined to fail. Paul moved on to living in victory by the Spirit in Romans chapter 8, and so should we. If the Gentiles in Galatia wanted to be physically circumcised they were in debt to keep the entire Mosaic system of laws. The Galatians had no idea of the great spiritual danger that they were in. Paul warns do not go back to the law that said Gentile salvation was to come through the Jews. For Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Justified here is not about salvation, but living a life justified before God, sanctification. Paul is not saying that a person can lose his salvation, but that it is no use to have the Spirit of Christ in them since they have become ineffective servants of Christ. If they believe that their fleshly performance of the law will justify them or make them pleasing to God, they are wrong. Whoever believes he can live a life that justifies him before God by works of the law has fallen from grace. If they put themselves back under the law, then Christ's life in them has become of no effect to them. They were called into the grace of Christ, 1 6. This life is all about what Christ has accomplished on Calvary and what Christ accomplishes through his spirit in the believer. It is not about us, what we have done or what we do in our flesh, our performance, but his performance. 5. For we through the Spirit wait, for the hope of righteousness by faith. The hope of righteousness by faith is to enter heaven and live with God as a result of having his imputed righteousness. 6.15. God did not have to give anyone imputed righteousness, but he did purely by his grace. Our blessed hope is to still be alive at the rapture. Titus 2 verse 13. That is when it will become evident who his real sons are. Rom. 8.19. 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Circumcision or uncircumcision does not matter, only faith in Christ which works by love. The faith of Christ and our faith in Him are what matter. 3.22.24 Love is the motivator. The only legitimate use of the law, schoolmaster, in the dispensation of grace is to show people their need for the Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Once saved, always saved, but make sure that you are saved and don't be left behind at the rapture. Members of the body of Christ are to be a channel of blessing of the love of Christ. The faith of Jesus Christ in us produces works of love. For they that are in the flesh cannot please God, Rom. 8 6, it must be his spirit, life, in and through us that does the work. 7 ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? The Galatians started off well when saved by Paul's preaching in Acts 13, 14 and showed him blessedness, love, 4, 15. Who hindered you from following Pauline truth? Paul's message of grace is the truth of what God is doing in the dispensation of grace, f. 3, 2. 8. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. 
This persuasion is not from the Spirit of Christ in his heavenly ministry, 1 colon 6, 3 colon 5, dot. 9 A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven, in the context a little law-keeping, can spread through the whole assembly fast. The Judaizers taught that they had received spiritual life by faith, but could only secure holiness by works of the law. Paul wants to keep Christ's good news of grace free from legalistic error for the sake of the body of Christ. The law could not give life it was the ministration of condemnation, while the Spirit was the ministration of righteousness, 2 Cor. 3 9, Christ's doctrine to us through Paul, works. 10 I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Paul was uneasy when he thought of them as feeble men being seduced by false teachers, but confident when he thought of them having the Spirit of the Lord. He is confident in them through the Lord that they will listen to him and not continue. In this legalistic error, but cast it out. Whoever defiles the body of Christ by not teaching Pauline doctrine will have to answer to God, 1 colon 6-9, 1 Cor. 317. Sadly, there are so many false preachers and teachers that put people under the law by preaching that the body of Christ began in Acts 2. Because if we believe that the body of Christ began on Pentecost then we apply law-keeping, water baptism, spiritual gifts, and other things that belong to Israel, to us. It was not until Paul was saved that we learned that Christ not only died for Israel's sins, but also for our sins and mystery. 11 And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. If I still preached circumcision I would not be persecuted because of the offense of the cross. His heavenly believers do not need to be circumcised. Christ's perfect work of salvation does not need to be added to. Paul's preaching that circumcision was not necessary was difficult for the self-righteous Jews to accept. The Jews had received the covenant of circumcision through Abraham, Genesis 17 verses 10 to 17. The circumcision that was given to Abraham was incorporated into the law of Moses, Leviticus. 12 colon 3. The offense of the cross is that Christ did everything needed for salvation, and no one can boast in their flesh, f. 2 colon 8. 9. We contribute nothing except the sin that made Christ's sacrifice necessary. When we believe the gospel, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. We receive his righteousness, 2 Cor. 5 21. Once we are saved we live by faith. But the flesh loves to perform and be praised. The flesh wants to add self to Christ's perfect work and glory in what people do, not Christ's sacrifice on the cross. The flesh loves to follow a performance-based acceptance system with outward ceremonies and rituals. The flesh wants to impose its performance on top of what Christ has done for us on Calvary. It does not want to hear, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. He alone is worthy of all glory and all our praise forever. It is not about us, but about him. Paul did not write about the many times he suffered at the hands of the Jews until 14 years later, 2 Cor. 12 colon 2. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one, 2 Cor. 11 24. 12 I would they were even cut off which trouble you. The Judaizers said the Galatians needed to be circumcised so Paul said he would wish for the Judaizers to be cut off from God and from his people, Genesis 17 verse 14, accursed for teaching false doctrine for this age. 13 4. Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. We have liberty in Christ in this dispensation under grace, but do not use this liberty to be a lawkeeper depending on your flesh, but by love serve one another. Grace is not a license to sin or to live any way we want to. Grace living is not living as we please, but living to please God, 1 Cor. 6 19, 20. Christ did not save us from sin to have us continue to sin, but to live like grace teaches us, Titus 2 verses 11 and 12. Grace gives us the ability to overcome sin, but it doesn't force us to overcome sin. God loves volition and allows us the freedom to choose to follow what he says in his word. Paul does not order us but beseeches, pleads, implores, us. We are sons, not robots. 14 For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor, all, as thyself. Paul says that the entire law is fulfilled in one word, love, our motivator, then he quotes Leviticus. 1918, 
Paul repeats all ten commandments in his letters except Sabbath keeping, Rom. 13 colon 9 f 6 colon 2 15 but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed one of another the law energizes the flesh resulting in the fruit of being judgmental unloving critical condemning self-righteous prideful legalistic and destructive rom 7 colon 8 11 Self-effort cannot achieve holiness through keeping the law, nor win the struggle against indwelling sin, Rom. 7 colon 15 18. 16 This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. First Paul said to stand fast in Christ's doctrine through him, 5 colon 1, now he says walk in the Spirit. Those who live under the law depend on the energy of the flesh, those who live by grace through faith depend on the power of the Spirit. His life in us uses his living word to teach us what the scripture, his written word, says so we can think like him, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6 16, Paul tells the believers how to have fruits unto righteousness, Phil. 1 11, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The spirit of Christ, his life in us by faith, 2 20, allows us to walk, live, in victory over the sinful flesh that still resides in our mortal flesh, body. Upon salvation, our soul and spirit were saved, but not our bodies. The sinful flesh still exists in the body even if it has been inactivated. God makes a sinner good by giving him a new divine nature, the spirit of his son in us, not by cleaning up the sin nature, the flesh, the old nature we inherited from Adam. We have the prince of peace in us. The old sin nature is like a frog that will never become a prince no matter how many times we kiss. Him. We should not try to put lipstick on the frog, the flesh, or dress it up. The only way to deal with the sin nature is to believe what God says and reckon it dead, crucified, 220, Rom, 6 colon 6, 813. We are dead to sin, but alive unto God because of the faith of Christ in us, Rom, 611. God does not want our old flesh, he wants to see his son live through us, Rom, 12 colon 1, 2. In Christ we are under a new law, not the law that condemns us. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8 verses 1 to 4. 17 For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. We cannot keep the law perfectly in our flesh, Paul identifies the war inside the believer's two natures, the flesh and the spirit. The flesh and the spirit are opposites and fight against each other so we cannot do what we want. The flesh is the sin nature that is dead, but still resides in our mortal body. The law makes the flesh revive, the strength of sin is the law, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 56. The believer that is operating in their flesh is rendered ineffective because the flesh cancels out the spirit. Therefore, they are not able to have the power of the spirit working in their life. 18 But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. But if we are led by the spirit then we are under the control of the indwelling spirit of his son, for colon 6, and not under the influence of the law. If we are led by the spirit, then we are the sons of God, Rom. 814, our only law now is the life of Christ in us, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death, Rom. 8 2, the result of the law is sin and death. When we are led by the spirit, his life in us, 220, then we are not under the law and controlled by the lust of the flesh, but under grace, Rom. 614, we do not live by trying to keep the law, but by learning to be led by the spirit the works of the flesh, and such like other similar things produce sinful behaviors of the lost. Verse 19 is sexual sins, v. 20 mental sins, and v. 21 moral sins. 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest, revealed, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, impurity, lasciviousness, lusts, 20 idolatry, witchcraft, 
sorcery, drugs, hatred, variance, contentions, disagreements, emulations, jealousy, wrath, hot temper, strife, quarreling, seditions, divisions, heresies, false teaching, 21 envyings, murders, premeditated killing, drunkenness, revelings, wild party, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul had told them when he met them that lost people who do these things will not have eternal life with God in his kingdom. Paul gives similar lists in other epistles, f. 5 colon 1 dash 6, 1 cor. 6 colon 9 dash 11, this life is all about making sure that we will have eternal life. Our faith must be a real heartfelt trust in the true gospel of what the Son of God has done, 1 cor. 15 colon 3, 4, and not merely a mental acknowledgement of historical facts. The corrupt flesh will never produce fruit that pleases God because it harbors the sin nature which will always produce sin. 22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patiently suffering provocations for a long time, gentleness, goodness, faith, 23 meekness, obedient, temperance, self-denial, against such there is no law. But the Spirit, His life in us, will produce fruit that pleases God because of the divine nature of the Son of God in us. Just as a living tree naturally produces fruit, Christ's life produces fruit effortlessly in and through us when we believe the doctrine in Paul's epistles. The result is that we have love, joy, peace, and so on and show grace to others. There is no law against the fruit of the Spirit. The nine spiritual fruit is an overflow of the Word of God rightly divided working effectually in us who believe, 1 Thess. 2.13, I was a Christian for 25 years before I came to understand the Bible rightly divided. It wasn't until then that I really began to feel like I finally started to produce the fruit of the Spirit. When Christ liveth in me, 2.20, I can produce fruit unto holiness, Rom. 6.22, Christ said a similar thing in John 15 verses 1 to 5. It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life, John 6 verse 63. But, it is essential to our spiritual welfare to understand the difference between Christ's ministry from heaven to Paul, the mystery, and Christ's ministry to Peter on earth to the nation of Israel, prophesy. For ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, wrong. 617, Paul wants the Christ he preached to be formed in us, 419. 24, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh, our old man, our sin nature which we inherited from Adam with its affections and lusts so we can live in the spirit. Our flesh has lost its power over us because we died with Christ. The flesh has no power over a dead man. 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. 8. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. 9. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Rom 6 6 14. We can serve God as instruments of righteousness. Sin will not control us. We did not feel that our old sin nature was crucified with Christ upon our salvation, we just reckon or count on that to be true, since God says so in his word. The only solution for the sinful flesh is crucifixion, walking, living, after the spirit mortifies, kills, the flesh, Rom. 8.13 God has always been more interested in a spiritual circumcision of the heart than a physical one in the flesh, Je. 4.4, 4, Rom. 2 colon 25-29. Upon salvation, God circumcised us spiritually, Colossians 2 verse 11. 
God severed or cut off the sinful flesh in our body from our soul and spirit, freeing them from its control. We can now make decisions moment by moment in our lives to do right not wrong without being slaves to sin, self, and Satan. Our confidence is in Christ in us, not human wisdom or actions. 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Since we live in the Spirit, our position is in Christ by faith, let us also walk in the Spirit, our daily practice is by His Spirit in us and through us by faith. We are spiritually alive having received His Spirit by faith so live by faith. We understand God's word rightly divided by faith and follow the instruction Christ gives us through our Apostle Paul. Paul repeats this instruction in Colossians, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted, stand firm, and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, Colossians 2 verses 6 and 7. What God accepts today is what his Son does through us. What exactly does it mean to live in the Spirit? Compare these parallel verses to find the answer, F. 5, 18, 19, and Colossians 3, verse 16. Did you notice that to be filled with the Spirit is to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom? Cornelius Stamm said, you can only believe as much as you have understood. That is why we want to understand as much of the Bible as possible, especially Paul's letters to the body of Christ. The works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit can easily be distinguished. The Spirit does not come by law-keeping, but by a walk of faith and sound doctrine. To walk in the Spirit, 8 colon 1, 4, means live by the control of the Spirit, instructed by God's Word rightly divided. Since good works are by His Spirit, Christ gets all the glory. We have to walk by faith in the Word of God rightly divided, 2 Cor. 5 colon 7, 2 Tim, 2 15, dot, 26 Let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another, envying one another. Let us not be desirous of glorying in what we do, saying look at what I have done by self-effort. Pretending to keep the law produces boasting, pride, provocation, and envy. Let us not idolize our law-keeping and things we accomplish in our flesh. Let us not compete with one another saying, anything you can do I can do better. I can do anything better than you. This is not how we should live. Comparing ourselves among ourselves is not wise. 2 Cor. 10 12. If we do anything right, let us give glory to the Lord by whose Spirit we were able to do it. 1 Cor. 1 31. 2 Cor. 10 17. Christ will judge us at his judgment seat. Envy is the result of being in the flesh. We are in the Spirit. We give a person the benefit of the doubt. We bless them and their service to the Lord and his people. We are not called to selfish living, but to godly living. To allow sin access into our lives is inconsistent with who we are in Christ. The Christian life is to let Christ live through us. We fight Satan with Christ's sound doctrine through Paul. It is his performance through us, not ours, which helps us to have victory over sins, self, and Satan, and to live a life pleasing to God. Edgar J. Haskins wrote the hymn Since the Savior Found Me, 1906. Since the Savior found me I have perfect rest, living in the realms of joy and happiness. Saved, 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 I'm happy on the way. Saved, 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 I love him more each day. Saved, 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 I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. The hymn writer knows that we are saved and sanctified by faith, but needed to add as we follow Paul to follow Christ. 1 Cor. 11 colon 1. Upon salvation we receive the gift of righteousness, wrong. 517. Christ's imputed righteousness is synonymous with his spirit, his life, and the faith of Jesus Christ in us. Only by rightly dividing God's truth can we live and function the way God intends us to. Spirit and righteousness are the same in 2 Corinthians 3 verses 8 and 9. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Galatians 5 verse 18 KJB. There's a whole world of people that need to hear the true gospel, and many of them are in the churches. The two natures in the believer. Believers are spirit, soul, and body, one thess. 523, when we are saved our spirit is made alive to God. God's spirit joins with our spirit, one core. 617, then God seals us with his Holy Spirit. God circumcises us, cutting the connection between soul and the flesh. 
This separation prevents the sin nature from having power over us, giving us a choice to sin or not. The sin nature can never be improved. The only solution for the sin nature is crucifixion, Rom. 8.13, when we were saved the sin nature was crucified with Christ and died. It lost its power. We have to reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God, Rom. 6.11, we are alive to God because we received his son's divine nature. Unfortunately, the sin nature is still present in our body and will be until the rapture when we receive our immortal bodies. The unsaved are carnal. A carnal believer is living like the unsaved and are babes, not led by the spirit. Our spirit is in our minds, F. 423, our souls, who we really are, is in our hearts, Rom. 1010, then we have our physical bodies that carry both around and performs actions based on the inner man, Rom. 811, carnal, flesh, versus spiritual, man's wisdom, waste of time. God's wisdom, redeeming the time. Bible, psychology, politics, talk radio, TV, diet gurus, video games, self-exaltation, Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul. Imitate Paul our pattern. Feed on God's word, Colossians 3 verse 10. Listen to grace preachers and teachers. Study the Bible rightly divided. Christ exalted, philosophy. Children of disobedience garbage in garbage out. Read Romans to Philemon then the rest. Sons of God. Mind of Christ in equals mind of Christ out. There is a war inside the soul of the believer where the two natures reside, between the sin nature, flesh, and the divine nature, spirit. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Galatians 5 verses 16 to 18. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians 5 verses 24 to 26. The nature which governs the believer is the one the believer feeds the most, wrong. 6 16, 22. Chapter 6 God is not mocked, we reap what we sow. 6 1 10 Let the spiritual believer help those in the flesh, legalism. 6 11 18 Walk according to your new identity in our Lord Jesus Christ. 6 1 Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The fault in this context is being entangled or snared by the devil. 2 Tim 2.26, into doing the works of the flesh, which is energized by trying to keep the law of Moses by self-effort. Those at fault think they can somehow keep it. The spiritual believers are to restore those in the flesh. The spiritual walk by faith in what Christ said to us through Paul, 1 Cor. 14.37-38, the preaching of Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 16.25, we should do our best to correct law-keeping believers who don't follow Paul with meekness just like Paul, our pattern, 1 Tim. 1 16, has shown us when he corrected the believers in Galatia. In the process of trying to correct someone else, we need to be very careful that we don't fall into legalism ourselves. We need to be gentle, meek, not harsh. We do not want to be tempted to give in to our flesh. We are only one step or one bad decision away from living in the flesh. If we come to a person condemning them, we have gone into legalism ourselves, 515. We need to remember that we used to be in that error ourselves before we learned better. We want to help others to come out of the doctrinal error of legalism into grace. We want to be gracious and kind. Being reviled, we bless, 1 Cor. 412, grace believers who attack others have fallen from grace themselves. They are not walking in the spirit but in the lust of the flesh. They become self-righteous, unmerciful, and self-important. We must be careful that this ugly behavior does not raise itself in us grace believers. Charity, sacrificial love, needs to be our motive for action. Are we serving the Lord Jesus Christ and his people or self? 
Do we care about the edification of the body of Christ promoting other people's beneficial ministries or just ourselves? To bury one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We should be willing to help each other out when we recognize that someone is at fault and has been moved away from Christ's sound doctrine to us through Paul, or never knew it. We should bear or share each other's burdens. We are to be each other's keeper. Cain was supposed to be his brother's keeper, that is what a good, kind, loving brother does. We should help others to walk in newness of life. Rom 6 4 It was the Son's blood and the Father's wisdom that saved us. The promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, came down on Pentecost and remained on earth after Paul was saved, 3 colon 14 16, Genesis 22 verses 8 and 18, Acts 1 colon 4, 2 33, John 14 verses 16 and 26, 15 26, 16 colon 7, 1 John 4 verse 2. Jesus Christ lived the perfect life and fulfilled the law for righteousness, Rom. 10 colon 4, and then shed his own blood as the perfect sacrifice. Now we serve God and others by the Spirit of his Son, for colon 6. The Law of Christ, Rom. 8 colon 1 4, is his life in us which produces the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Rom. 839, we can fulfill the Law of Christ and allow the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus to control us. We can have selfless love for God and others when we have His life in us. Learning to walk in the Spirit, 516, and to be led of the Spirit, 518, is learning to live by faith in Christ's word to us through Paul. Under grace, we are free to fail. Failure is one of the best teachers. We have to trust the Bible rightly divided and stand fast in our truth. Satan wants us to be moved away from Pauline truth. Some people may be tempted to not try to help the legalist, but we should do what we can in a kind, tactful, gracious, and gentle way. Sometimes it is difficult especially if the legalist is stubborn and refuses to listen when we try to help them with rightly divided Bible verses. They need to be guided to come to see the fellowship of the mystery, F. 3 9, to live by faith in God's word and to trust in Christ's ministry to us through Paul, F. 3 2. For many it is so new and different from what they have been taught that they refuse to listen or to use the right Bible. We want to be helpers of their joy and show them Bible verses so they can believe what God said, not us, 2 Cor. 124.3 For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. For if a person thinks he is somebody, too important to help someone out, when he is nobody, he deceives himself. We can easily fall into the lust of the sinful flesh that is lurking in our mortal bodies. Rom 5.12.7.15-25 7, Only Christ could live a perfect life. We owe him everything. God is no respecter of persons. 2 colon 6 f. 6 colon 9 When we exalt and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ above ourselves everything else falls into place. God respects his son's life lived out in us as we consider what is good, better, best, or most excellent, and do that. Phil 1.10 We must be ruled by the word of Christ to us through Paul. Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 24 tells us that the spirit is in the mind and how to live. We put on Christ, the new man, and put off who we were in Adam, the old man. The sound doctrine in us helps us to make right decisions. For but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. We have a personal responsibility to live our lives dependent on Christ to live through us, to produce fruit with value. Was our work motivated by love? We prove our work when we are Pauline and walk in the Spirit by faith in Christ's doctrine through Paul. We are transformed by the renewing, reprogram, of our minds, Rom. 12 colon 2, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another, with grace in your hearts to the Lord, Colossians 3 verse 16. The word works in us and our walk becomes more steady. This doesn't just happen, it takes discipline. We must prioritize. Plan to read the Bible daily, I read it first thing in the morning with my coffee, be renewed in our minds by his word, and apply it to our lives. Determine to read God's word attentively, use the reading list on pages 74 and 75. 5 For every man shall bear his own burden. 
Each believer has personal responsibility and will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ based on what we allowed Christ to do through us in this life. 2 Cor 5.10 Did we serve God the way he asked us to? Our Christian lives will not function on the basis of ignorance of the Bible. All scripture is profitable. 2 Tim 3.16 17 A workman will have a job with responsibility in heaven. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Tim 2.15 6 Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Let the learner bless his Pauline Bible teachers who teach Christ's word to them, financially, by love, by prayer, and in other ways. I am grateful that many of you pray for this ministry, support it by donating on our website, buy our books on Amazon giving them to family and friends, or by writing book reviews on Amazon. Our biggest expenses are paper, ink, website, and cameras. Sharing the Facebook and YouTube video lessons is also helpful. Teachers are not perfect, only God's word is perfect, so check everything that is said with the King James Bible. 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Don't be fooled into thinking that God doesn't know who's serving him in obedience to Pauline. Doctrine because he does, Rom. 8, 5, 6, dot. 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Did we serve by vain glory, competition, and envy? 526. He that trusts in his own works of righteousness by self-effort of their flesh will reap corruption, works of no eternal value. Do not mix grace with the law as a means of justification or sanctification. We put ourselves under the law if we believe that the body of Christ began in Acts 2, instead of Acts 9. But, if we live with the love of Christ in us we sow to the Spirit and reap life everlasting and rewards as we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Rom. 12 colon 1 for Christ to live through. 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As ambassadors for Christ, let us not grow weary of reconciling others to Christ and standing for Pauline truth for we will have rewards at the judgment seat of Christ which last for all eternity if we don't give up. 2 Cor. 5 colon 18-21. Paul instructs all members of the body of Christ to share sound doctrine in the community, Titus 2 verses 1 to 8. 10 As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. We should be ready to seize every opportunity we have. For years I taught small grace Bible classes and told Patty that more people should know this information. After some requests, we began posting the studies on Facebook and our audience increased immediately. I am happy that other Grace Bible studies are popping up everywhere. Many are teaching family and friends. They say if she can do it, so can I. Some ask how to order the large timeline from Grace School of the Bible. Just call Deb Keeble at Shorewood 630-529-0520. Be sure to order some timeline brochures and the key to understanding the Bible by Pastor Richard Jordan. Let's help one another to spread the word. God's will is for all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, the mystery given to Paul, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially to other believers in Christ. The Israel of God existed in Paul's day, but phased out in the first century. Between Acts 9 and 15 people could be saved into either Peter's or Paul's group depending on the gospel they heard, but after Acts 15 only Paul's gospel was valid. Today the body of Christ is the household of faith. A pastor can grow his congregation by equipping and encouraging everyone in the assembly to share Pauline doctrine. Christ is the head of the church, so it is better to say we not you. Even a child can say Paul is our one apostle, the twelve spoke to Israel. Christ's ambassadors have purpose in life. 11 Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. The size of each individual letter was large, most likely due to some eye trouble Paul had. He may have written it urgently without waiting to dictate to an amanuensis, secretary, due to the spiritual danger the Galatians were in. 
12 as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. The Galatians taking part in the Jewish rite of circumcision alerted Paul to the fact that they were no longer purely Pauline in their doctrine. Religious observances or rituals are a fair shoe in the flesh. Our gallant apostle fought Satan's attack on them and his teaching. Paul knew what was at stake in the struggle to preserve the purity of Pauline truth. The Judaizers wanted to put Paul's converts back under the law to overthrow his apostolic authority and poison their minds against Paul. We should not listen to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, 1 Tim. For colon 1, Satan's false ministers are in the pulpit, 2 Cor, 11 colon 13 15. Jesus Christ had Paul defend his apostleship. Satan wants believers to be ineffective, not functioning the way God intends them to. Pauline believers who teach that Christ lived a perfect life and accomplished a perfect salvation without the need for added works often suffer persecution, Colossians 1 verses 23 to 27. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, 2 Tim 3 12. 13 For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Even the Judaizers cannot keep the law, but compel them to be circumcised, so they can boast about adding another notch on their belt. Even with the Spirit in them, Peter's and Paul's group sin until we receive our immortal bodies without the sinful flesh in them. 14 But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. God forbid that I should glory in my flesh, or in anything other than in the wondrous cross of the Lord Jesus. This present evil, world, 1 colon 4, is only a vestige of the new heaven and earth, Rom. 822, the world is crucified to me and I no longer care about anything it has to offer. Paul was crucified with Christ, and Christ lives in him, 220. Paul is the servant of Christ, 110, not himself. Through Paul we learn the full scope of all that the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished by his perfect, complete, and finished work of salvation. In one gigantic heroic act, he paid the sin debt for all mankind with his own precious blood. Our mediator not only died for our sins, but redeemed us from the law nearly 2,000 years ago, 1 Tim. 2 colon 5, the father accepted his payment in full and raised him from the dead. He paid for the sins of all mankind. When we sin we can say, Christ already paid for that. Thank you, Lord. We have his spirit in us now as a guarantee of our eternal life and we can't lose it. The believers in the kingdom on earth will also have his spirit in them. Paul explained that the son's death, burial, and resurrection for sins allowed the father to impute his son's righteousness to two groups, Peter's and Paul's, and to resurrect them, Rom. 3 colon 21 26. Satan hates that. 15 For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. For in Jesus Christ being circumcised or uncircumcised is not what matters, what matters is being a new creature by having his spirit in us and having been spiritually baptized into the body of Christ. 328 For colon 6, Rom. 8 colon 9 Peter preached the gospel of the circumcision to the Jews. God required the men of Israel to be both physically and spiritually circumcised, Je. For colon 4, Paul preached the gospel of the uncircumcision because no physical circumcision is necessary for his heavenly people. We didn't feel the spirit come in because it didn't happen in the body, but in the inner man. Believers have been translated out of Adam into Christ, Colossians 1 verse 13, 1 Cor. 15 22, 45. New creatures have a new identity and generate good. Works. F. 210. We should be who we are in Christ, and not look back to who we were before. The Christian reformer Martin Luther advocated that men not be circumcised. After all, Adam was perfectly made by God and he had foreskin. 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Paul is not saluting everyone in Galatia, but only those who walk according to this rule. What is this rule? The rule is glorying in the cross alone, having his spirit, our flesh crucified, and his spirit living in us. It is being crucified with Christ and still being alive, but not I, but Christ because Christ liveth in me. 220. 
Paul, desires peace to those who walk according to the rule of being controlled by the Spirit of his Son and only glorying in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wants God to show mercy to the Israel of God, Peter's group. In the future, God will make the nation of Israel from this believing remnant, Luke 12 verse 32, Matt 19 28, 21 43. When Paul had a chance he returned to Galatia, strengthening all the disciples, Acts 18 verse 23. Sadly, most of Christendom are ignorant of Paul's distinctive apostleship his heaven-bound believers. Satan wants to conceal what Paul revealed and has had Christ's gospel through Paul, 2 Cor. 4 colon 3, 4. Satan has convinced some grace believers to move away from Paul's sound doctrine, 1 colon 6-9. We need to stand fast in the liberty, 5 colon 1, of Christ's truth to us through Paul and not be entangled with the law, or mix law and grace. We must understand the Pauline truth in Romans to Philemon, do them, and the God of peace will be with us. Those things, which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Phil, 4 colon 9. We stand firm, steadfast, unmovable, 1 core. 1558, in God's instruction to his heavenly people through Paul, rightly divided from the rest of the Bible, 2 Tim. 215. We study the whole armor of God, entire Bible, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand, F. 613. Christ gave his life for us, in order to give his life to us, so he could live his life through us. 17 From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul preached the offense of the cross and was brutally persecuted for it, even stoned to death like Stephen in Acts 14 verse 19, 2 Cor. 11 colon 23-33 As a servant of Christ, he suffered to build the body of Christ, and calls his scars the marks of the Lord Jesus, 110. Are we willing to take a stand for grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone according to the revelation of the mystery? 18 Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Paul closes the letter simply wanting the grace of the Lord, his spirit to be with their spirit. Let us follow Christ's instructions to us through Paul, 2 Tim. 2 colon 7. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified. Unto me, and I unto, the world. Galatians 6 verse 14. Near the cross by Fanny J. Crosby, 1869. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Refrain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day, with its shadows o'er me. Near the cross I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever, till I reach the golden strand, just beyond the Five river. Five Courses of Punishment, Leviticus 26 One five five installments of the fifth course of punishment. Five mandates of the Davidic covenant, Redeemer, Deliverer, Avenger, King, and Blesser. Tower of Babel Abraham Moses. Crossing Jordan Law. Genesis. Time Past. Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 12. Davidic C.O.V. Elja. Elisha. Ducid, Sono, Times of the Gentiles, 560 years, 490, 1 and 2 Chronicles, Assyrian slash Babylonian, Medo Persian rulership, years, 49, years, years, Silence 8, Amos, 8 colon 11 12, 1, 2, Israel, the circumcision nigh unto God, the law serves as a middle wall of partition. Gentiles uncircumcision far off without God Exodus Josh. Judd. Sam KGS 2 KGS 12 KGS 2 KGS EZR The Leviticus Ruth 16, 12 to 10 32 17 colon 1 Nay silence Sam to est of God to 10 31 to 1 to 16 1 KGS 22, 16 20 25 colon 30 Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon.
Not shown is the 89 years gap between the 70 years in Babylon when the temple was rebuilt by Zerubbabel and Joshua in Ezra and the beginning of Daniel's timeline in Nay. 2 colon 6, when the wall was rebuilt. 70 weeks, 490 years, are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, Israel's idolatry and sins, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, fulfill prophecy, and to anoint the most holy Jesus Christ as King. 25 Know therefore and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, forty-nine years, and threescore and two weeks, four hundred and thirty-four years, the street, of Jerusalem, shall be built again, and the wall, nay, two colon six, even in troublous times. 26 And after threescore and two weeks, 434 years, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. 27 And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, seven years, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, without Christ's spirit or presence. Dan 9,24-27 THTH What is in the gap between the 69 and 70 weeks? In the gap is the one-year extension of mercy to Israel and the mystery. The 69 weeks begin with the command to rebuild the city and the wall given in Nehemiah 2 verse 6, the temple decree is in Ezra 1 verse 1, and end with the prince, Messiah, being cut off, killed. Israel killed the Son of God in unbelief, not in faith. Jesus Christ coming and dying on time proves that he is the true Messiah. Daniel's passage also prophesied Antichrist, the Prince, ISA. 10 colon 5, Dan. 1137, destroying the city, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary. He flatters apostate Israel, makes a seven-year covenant with them to rebuild the temple and offer animal sacrifices. The 70 years of Babylonian captivity cleanse the land. After that captivity, Israel never worshipped idols again. The 490 years will cleanse the people of Israel from their transgression of unbelief in God's word. At the end of the 70 weeks of Daniel, the last seven years, the true Messiah, King Jesus, will return and rescue the wheat, true believers, and judge the tares, unbelievers that worship Antichrist, and cast them into a furnace of fire, Matt. 1342, 50, along with Antichrist and the false prophet, Rev 1919, 2010. Gentiles who miss the rapture should bless the wheat, believing Israel, not the tares, apostate Israel, before and during the tribulation. The five courses of chastisement for Israel. By inspiration, Moses told Israel in Leviticus 26 that they would suffer five courses of chastisement if they did not obey God and worshipped idols, beginning with the golden calf. In Leviticus 26 verses 1 to 13, God promised Israel blessings if they worshipped and obeyed him, but in Leviticus. 26 colon 14, 15 God warns Israel of chastisement if they walk contrary to him, worship idols, spiritual adultery, and do not obey his commands Leviticus. 26 colon 16 39. But then in Leviticus 26 verses 40 to 46, God comforts them saying if they confess their sins, he will keep his covenants with them. The first course of chastisement is in Leviticus. 26 colon 16, 17 physical illnesses, enemies will reign over them and eat their harvest, Gideon, Ruth, Judd, 2 13, 1 Sam, 1 to 16, the second course of chastisement Leviticus, 26 colon 18 dash 20 no rain, poor crop, Elijah, God will not hear from heaven the land shall not yield her increase, famine, the trees no fruit. To break their pride, the kingdom is divided because of Solomon's sins and God says he will punish them seven times more, 1 Kings 12 to 22. The third course of chastisement Leviticus. 26 colon 21, 22 If ye walk contrary unto me, the wild beasts will rob you of your children. They will be left few in number, Elisha, 2 Kings 1 to 10 31, again it will be seven times more. The fourth course of chastisement Leviticus. 
26-23-26, if you will not reform, then I will walk contrary to you. Pestilence, disease, famine, and sword. Greater oppression of their enemies, the Gentiles, invasions, lengthy sieges, and occupation of their land, 2 Kings 10.32-16.20, yet seven times for your sins. The fifth course of chastisement is his fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins, Leviticus. 26.27-39 There will be severe famine and destruction of their cities and the sanctuary. God will not accept their sacrifices. Removal from their land. The Assyrian captivity of the northern kingdom and Babylonian captivity of the southern kingdom of Judah, 2 Kings 17, 1-25-30. Jeremiah, Dan, 9, 2, said 70 years were necessary to cleanse the land and allow her Sabbaths. Then 490 years to cleanse the people was given to Daniel, Dan 9, 24-27. There are five installments of the fifth course of chastisement. 1. Assyrian and Babylonian captivity, dispersion. 2. The 49 years back in the land, temple, wall, Ezra, Ne, Hag, Zep, Zek, Mal. 3.400 years of silence. Therefore the Apocrypha are not the word of God. 4. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, the Twelve, Pentecost, and the stoning of Stephen. 5. Jacob's trouble, the tribulation, his second coming to avenge his remnant. The tribulation will complete the 70 weeks of Daniel's timeline and finish the transgression of Israel, Dan 9 26. Daniel interpreted King Nebuchadnezzar's dream revealed that the time of the Gentiles, Luke 21 verse 24. It is also over when the smitting stone returns and destroys those kingdoms and sets up his own. The stone becomes a gigantic mountain, a great kingdom, with the king of the Jews, Jesus Christ ruling. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Dan 2 31-35 Daniel was given two timelines by God. One, in a night vision, Dan, 2.19, to the Gentile king Nebuchadnezzar about the great image concerning the times of the Gentiles, Luke 21 verse 24. It began with Judah's 70-year Babylonian captivity and will end at Christ's second coming. The other via angel Gabriel in the first year of Darius to Israel, Dan 9.21 began later with the command to restore Jerusalem and build the wall, nay, 2 6, but Daniel's timeline to the nation also ends at his return. The time of the Gentiles began with the Babylonian captivity of Judah and ends at his second coming, 2 Kings 25 verses 4 and 10, 21, 2 Kron, 36 colon 17 21, Dan. 244, 45, 9, 24-27, Ezek. 36, 17-38. But, Daniel's timeline is 490 years. During the last 42 months there will be seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials of wrath poured out. At that time, the believing remnant of Israel and those who bless them will use the King James Bible or equivalent to anticipate every event to Great Tribulation Timeline, seven years of God's wrath, the things which shall be hereafter. Revelation 1 verse 19, 42 months slash 1260 days Revelation 11 verses 2 and 3, 1260 days slash 42 months Rev 12 colon 6, 13 colon 5, the very day he returns. Rapture, I fess, for colon 15-18, 1 core, 15 colon 51-53, 3 and a half years, Revelation, 6 colon 1 10, 11, Matt, 24 colon 9-14, we are almost here, Revelation 4 verse 1, church age, the things which are,
Revelation 1 verse 19, Matt 24 colon 3-8, 32 42, Mid Trib, Second Coming 3 and a Half Years Battle of Armageddon, Revelation 19 verses 11 to 21, Revelation 14 colon 1 19 colon 10, Matt 24 colon 16 31, Antichrist sits in the temple image of the beast set up, Dan 9 27, 11 31, 12 11, Matt. 2400 hours 15, Mark 13 verse 14, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, Revelation 13 verses 14 to 18, Millennium 1000 years, Marriage Supper, of the Lamb, Matt, 24 colon 30 dash 31, 25 colon 31 dash 46 Dan, 12 colon 12 dash 13, Job 19 verses 25 to 27 Heb, 11 colon 39 dash 40, Dios lo hizo. Pecado por nosotros. Pecado. Dios lo hizo pecado por nosotros. Th. Pecado. El tomo mi pecado. Yo recibi su justicia. Yo recibi su justicia. Para que nosotros fusimos hechos justicial. De Dios en el tu cor. 521. El tomo mi pecado. Para que nosotros fusimos hechos justicia de Dios en el 2 Cor 521, Justicia de Dios, Spanish and English Salvation Tracts. Justicia de Dios. Sabes que nadie puede presentarse ante al Santo Padre en la Justicia de Jesucristo? Criora que Cristo murió por nuestros pecados, fue enterrado y resucitó al tercer día según las escrituras y recibiras su justicia, 1 Corinthians 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Corinthians 5 21. Jesús tomó nuestros pecados y nosotros recibimos su justicia. Sabes que nadie puede presentarse ante al Santo Padre en la justicia de Jesucristo? Criora que Cristo murió por nuestros pecados, fue enterrado y resucitó al tercer. Dios lo hizo. Pecado por nosotros. Pecado. Para que nosotros fusimos hechos justicia de Dios en el. 2 Cor. 521. El tomo mi pecado. Yo recibi. Su justicia. Justicia de Dios. Dios según las escrituras y recibiras su justicia, 1 Corinthians 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Corinthians 5 21, Jesús tomó nuestros pecados y nosotros recibimos su justicia. Sabes que nadie pueda presentarse ante el Santo Padre en la justicia de Jesucristo? Criora que Cristo murió por nuestros pecados, fue enterrado y resucitó al tercer día según las escrituras y recibiras su justicia, 1 Corinthians 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Corinthians 5 21. Jesús tomó nuestros pecados y nosotros recibimos su justicia. God made him to be sin for us. God made him to be sin for us. Sin, sin, Belmanin manure. He took my sin. He took my sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. We might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. I received his righteousness. Righteousness of God. I received his righteousness. Righteousness of God. Do you know that no one can come before the Father without the righteousness of Jesus? Believe that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. Jesus took our sins and we receive his righteousness. Do you know that no one can come before the Father without the righteousness of Jesus? Believe that Christ died. God made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. He took my sin, sin, righteousness of God. I received his righteousness. For our sins was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. Jesus took our sins and we receive his righteousness. Do you know that no one can come before the Father without the righteousness of Jesus? Believe that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. Jesus took our sins and we receive his righteousness. 
Knowing our enemy, the anointed cherub that covereth, was not satisfied with the highest position God could give a heavenly creature. He was corrupted by reason of his wisdom and his beauty, Ezek. 28 11-19 He became Satan, adversary. Satan made a plan and said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, angels, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, ISA. 14 12-14 Satan tricked one-third of the angels into joining him, Revelation 12 verse 4, and became the prince of the power of the air, F. 2 colon 2 Heaven was probably divided into twelve realms. Gabriel told Daniel, There is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince, Dan. 10.21 From Gabriel, we learn that ten of the most powerful angels followed Satan, Ezek. 28.17.18 Creation hates a vacuum because the result is worse than the beginning. Our Lord informed us, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first, Matt. 12.43-45 Man is God's masterpiece, created to have fellowship and serve God. By default, Satan acquired the kingdoms of the world when Adam joined him in rebelling against God, Gen 3. When tempted by the devil in the wilderness, Jesus Christ did not deny that the kingdoms of the world belonged to Satan. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Luke 4 verses 5 to 7. The Son of God was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Wrong. 8 7. To defeat Satan by paying for our sins with his own blood and dying in man's place. Heb. 2 14. We receive his righteousness when we believe. 2 Cor. 521. The only way to break free from being a slave to Satan is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16 verse 31. Satan's policy of evil against the body of Christ is accomplished by transforming himself into an angel of light. 2 Cor. 11 14, 15, 23. Men empowered by him pose as the ministers of Christ. 2 Cor. 11 colon 3, 4. But preach another Jesus, earthly, and another gospel, the gospel of the kingdom on earth. Some are deceitful workers for the sake of money, others out of ignorance. Satan is bringing many down to the eternal lake of fire, Matt. 25 colon 41, the God of this world hath blinded the minds, 2 Cor. 4 colon 4, the writing process. Pre-writing, time to think. Drafting, time to write it down. Revising, time to improve my writing. Editing, how to be a writer, questions to consider. Did I pray and ask the Lord to help me? What do I want to say? How do I want to say it? Who will read my writing? What research do I need to do to begin? Who can I talk to about my ideas? Do I want to make an outline? Are my thoughts organized? In what order do I want to say them? Which ideas do I want to develop? Who can read this and offer suggestions? Have I read what I have written? Are my details clear? Should I add or subtract parts? Have I used the best ideas and words? What suggestions have others made? Have I used complete sentences? Time to make things correct. Publishing and marketing. Time to share my writing. Redeeming the time. Checked spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. Have I made all the corrections I need? Has someone checked my work? Do I save the correct copy on a thumb drive? Should I self-publish on Amazon, go to a publisher, have it on Kindle? How can I make the book known? People, social media, YouTube? Should I have a blog? Should I make a CD, other languages? Next two people who used their time well. Two people who used their time well. William Tyndall, 1494-1536.
great contributor to the BOC. Accused of being a heretic, he was sentenced to death at 42 years old. Fanny Crosby, 1820-1915, Mag T. The Cha, great blessing to the BOC. Blind and generous to the poor, she lived to be 94 years old. William Tyndall, 1494-1536, a great contributor to the body of Christ. The King James New Testament is from 83-90% to William Tyndall's work and the King James Bible Old Testament is about 76% Tyndall's work. The unfinished portions of Tyndall's Bible was finished by John Rogers and Miles Coverdale. He was a well-educated man that was born in Gloucestershire, England, and attended both Oxford and Cambridge universities. He wrote several books. He said to Bell and others of the Catholic diocese that exalted the Pope over the Bible, I defy the Pope and all his laws, and if God spares my life, ere many years, I will cause the boy that driveth the plow to know more of the scriptures than thou dost. He tried to be allowed to translate the Bible in England in 1523 but was denied so he left for Europe. He spent time in Cologne, France translating, then he went to Wittenberg in Germany where he completed the translation of the Greek New Testament in 1526. Then he began to translate the Hebrew Old Testament. Tyndall revised his Bible in 1534. Tyndall was betrayed into the hands of the Catholic Bishop Stokesley in Antwerp by Henry Phillips. He was found guilty of heresy and executed in October of 1536 at the age of 42 by strangulation followed by the burning of his body at the stake. His last words were Lord, open the King of England's eyes. His other works include Obedience of a Christian Man and a translation of the Handbook of the Christian Soldier by Erasmus.as. While as individual words, Tyndall also coined such familiar phrases as My Brother's Keeper Knock and it shall be opened unto you. A moment in time. Fashion not yourselves to the world. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given you. Judge not that ye be not judged. The word of God which liveth and lasteth forever. Let there be light. The powers that be. The salt of the earth. A law unto themselves. It came to pass. The signs of the times. Filthy lucre. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Live, move and have our being. Francis, Fanny, Jane Crosby, 1820-1915, A Blessing to the Body of Seest. A famous American hymn writer, poet, lyricist, and mission worker. Fanny was born in the New York area, and when she was six weeks old she had an eye infection, a doctor prescribed a mustard poultice, and after that, she was blind for life. She wrote more than 8,000 hymns and gospel songs by the end of the century she was a household name. Ira Sankey attributed much of the success of his and D.L. Moody's evangelical campaign to Crosby's songs. She always prayed for inspiration from the Lord before she wrote her songs and had a great desire that God would use them to save a million souls. Some publicists were hesitant to use so many songs by one writer so she had nearly 200 pseudonyms. She wrote a poem at the age of eight in which she determined not to feel sorry for herself because she was blind. After her father died when she was six months, her mother and grandmother, who died when she was 11 years, raised her. She was taught to memorize all of the books of Moses, the four gospels, Proverbs, the Song of Solomon, and many psalms and other scriptures. However, she said that she was not saved until age 31 after hearing Alas and Did My Savior Bleed by Isaac Watts. She married a blind composer, Alexander Van Alstyne, when she was 32 and they were married for nearly 50 years, he died in 1902. They had a baby girl Frances, that died in her sleep shortly after birth, possibly from SIDS. Fanny wrote safe in the arms of Jesus in remembrance of her and this song has comforted many people whose loved ones, especially children have died young. She was friends of President Polk, President Cleveland, and Ira Sankey, blinded by glaucoma, 1903. Some of her well-known songs are All the Way My Savior Leads Me, Saved by Grace, To God Be the Glory, Blessed Assurance, Pass Me Not O Gentle Savior, Jesus is Tenderly Calling You Home, and Rescue the Perishing. She had a tendency not to accept money and to give away most of whatever money she had. She lived a humble lifestyle in rented apartments and rooms. She died of a brain hemorrhage at the age of 94 and said she owed her longevity to the care of her Lord. She is buried in Mount Grove Cemetery in Bridgepoint, CT. Her small gravestone said, 
Aunt Fanny, she hath done what she could, Fanny J. Crosby, but the new and bigger gravestone says, Blessed. Assurance. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 16. Not what these hands have done. Horatius Bonner, 1808-1889 Not what these hands have done Can save my guilty soul Not what this toiling flesh hath wrought Can make my spirit whole Not what I feel or do Can give me peace with God Not all my prayers, or sighs, or tears can ease this awful load Thy love to me, O God Not mine, O Lord, to thee can rid me of this dark unrest and set my spirit free. Thy work alone, Lord Jesus, can ease this weight of sin. Thy blood alone, O Lamb of God, can give me peace within. I praise the God of grace. I trust his love and might. He calls me his, I call him mine. My God, my joy, my light. Dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, for several years. She only wishes she would have been saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, sooner. But now, she is making up for lost time. She is recording and sharing what she learns so others do not need to waste time as she did. She has been enjoying daily personal Bible study, reading through the Bible, and memorizing scripture for the past 31 years. It is so thrilling when we understand what God said. A married retired nurse midwife she has devoted the rest of her life to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, F. 3 9. She has. W. Been teaching the Bible for more than 20 years. Her rightly dividing Bible studies are available on Facebook and YouTube at Truth Be Told. Her website is MarianneManley.com. Her joy after understanding the Bible better led her to edify the body of Christ by writing God's secret. Then Romans, a concise commentary. 1 Corinthians, a commentary. 2 Corinthians, a commentary in Galatians, a commentary, Ephesians, a commentary, and Philippians, Colossians, Philemon commentary, and Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Paul's prison epistles, Why was the earth without form, void, and dark? Just as God said for children, the certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians commentary. Paul's pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon commentary, Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Paul's T books, Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3. Missed the rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrew, How to Be Saved Made Simple, and the Rightly Dividing Study Guides. Many people have all her books. Other books by Marianne Manley. God's Secret A Primer with Pictures for How to Rightly Divide the Word of Truth on Amazon.com in Black and White Edition and in Spanish El Secreto de Dios. Why the King James Bible is the Holy Bible. Rightly Dividing Colossians and Philemon Study Guide Rightly Dividing Philippians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Ephesians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Galatians Study Guide Rightly Dividing 2 Corinthians Study Guide Rightly Dividing 1 Corinthians Study Guide Rightly Dividing Romans Study Guide Romans, a concise commentary, also in a black and white edition 1 Corinthians, a commentary 2 Corinthians, a commentary Galatians, a commentary. Ephesians, a commentary. Philippians, Colossians, Philemon commentary. The certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Paul's pastoral epistles, Timothy letters, Titus, and Philemon commentary. Treasure Hunt Volume 1, commentary only Romans to Galatians. Treasure Hunt Volume 2, commentary only on Paul's prison epistles. Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Commentary on Paul's T books. Why was the earth without form, void, and dark? Just as God said. Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3. Missed the rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrews. How to be saved made simple. This booklet is perfect for our lost loved ones. Could God have a 7,000 year plan for mankind? Also in black and white in AD 34 the year Jesus died for all, same content as could God, in 9 by 6 size. The author may be contacted by email at mariannemanley at sbcglobal.net. Please visit her website, www.mariannemanley.com, free.pdf. Files, follow her on Facebook at facebook.com slash marianne.manley.7 and God's. 
Secret Facebook page at facebook.com slash God's Secret A Primer with Pictures. Find her on YouTube. Just type in her name and find her teaching the Bible. A chapter at a time, or on salvation, rightly dividing, and the rapture her YouTube channel or truth be told, or call 858-273-2049. <laughs>